Welcome everyone to Shaper Sessions. My name is Jake. And I'm Russ. And today we got a fun one for you because we got two new bits that hit the store. And we're going to show you about, um, both of them today. Yeah, we got two new bits. We've got a finger pull router bit, which is really great for what we're calling integrated drawer pulls or uh, cabinet front pulls. Does these really cool undercuts. We're going to show you all the technique that you need to use that. Uh, Ned, can we switch to the Origin Cam? Show that off real quick. Yeah, that's pretty slick. It's a funky looking one. And then we've got our new coving bit, which is good for all kinds of stuff. Uh, but today we're going to use it for a juice groove in a cool, organically shaped cutting board that you couldn't really make any other way than with Shaper Origin, which I think is pretty fun. Yeah, plenty of ways to do a juice groove, but so that's why we went with something that was a little bit more organic. Yeah. That would just be maybe more cumbersome any other way. Yeah. And it's a breeze with Origin. Yeah, so standard guidelines for every show. You know, we've got the Q&A at the end of this live show. You can tell it's live, uh, especially today. Uh, and to ask those questions, to get those questions to us, please put them in the chat at the bottom or on the side of your screen. We've got Ted in the chat today. He's answering as many questions as he can. And I'll say this again, you know, one of the things that I love about this show is our Origin community who tunes in every week and the number of questions that get answered by Origin owners, yeah. you know. Faster than any of us can get to it. It's great. We go in and read the comments uh, after every show, so make sure to heckle us a little bit. We love <laughs> it. Uh, but any questions that can't be answered or that get a live demo, we'll do those at the end of this live show. Yep. Uh, we also do giveaways. Today, we're giving away one each of these new router bits. And to enter that giveaway, we're going to have a poll question that pops up in the middle of your screen about halfway through the show. We do that kind of when we do product announcements so that the poll doesn't cover anything important. Yeah. What else? We've got a shop tour. We've got a shop tour show. Um, we got, I mean, I'm just going to mention it, Kickstarter is still alive. For, for Trace. Shaper, for Shaper Trace. And we're going to do a Can You Trace It segment. Yes. That's a great reminder. We're going to do a couple Can You Trace It's. I've got some cool inlay examples that were emailed to us. So these are total wild cards. I think they turned out really well. Um, and hang on to the middle of the show to see those. Yeah. Reminder, that is Can You Trace It at ShaperTools.com. That's the email. Please keep sending us stuff because it's really cool to see what you all want to trace. Absolutely. And keep sending us shop tours. If you send us a shop tour, we are going to send you one of these cool new router bits. Two to four minutes narrated horizontal or landscape orientation, please. Those are the only requirements your shop can be big yeah. or small or mm -hmm. clean or an absolute disaster. Sometimes it's uh, great if it's a messy shop. We love seeing messy shops. We love seeing shops that are used. Send those shop tours to sessions at shapertools.com. All right. Okay. Let's, let's get, get started. It. So what are we cutting today? Let's show a couple examples of this finger pull style. Yeah, we're going to start off with the finger pull. Um, this is actually a cool one we saw in the community, a cool shape. Could you yeah. hand me both? Yeah, I'll hand you both. So what, that was the coolest thing about this was that both of them went together. Yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah, do, let's overhead. do that on the overhead. So let's pretend like these are two drawer faces, but they're actually split down the middle, and that is the profile of that finger pull. So it would be a really clean front face to grab from yeah. from any any point. Um, maybe that side camera show the profile a little bit better. It's a nice section. Yeah, yeah, very slick. So what we're going to do today, we're going to do something similar to this, but we're going to use plate, and we're going to do one drawer at a time. We're going to use Origin's really easy on-tool design to create kind of a pill shape or a rectangle that's completely rounded on either side. Exactly. Um, we don't use Origin's on-tool cat very much, so we thought no, we'd we kind of take it back to basics today. And it's fun. The pill, the pill shape or the... Um the rounded rectangle is like one of my favorite shapes for handles, and it's kind of difficult to make any other way. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you can do two forcing holes and connect it with a jigsaw, but this comes out clean right off the bat. So, yeah. anyways, starting off with plate, I got my reticle down, and I am lining myself up to, let me see that overhead, please. Just my two drawer faces, I have my center mark and a nice big horizontal mark that I'm going to line up my reticle too. For anyone who's new to the show or who's new to the Shaper system, Plate is our universal template for Origin. 
Basically what that means is you can cut anything inside this window repeatedly. All of those different digital templates are stored on the router. And like you're going to see in a minute, we're going to do two drawer fronts today. Once you've set it up once, you can pick up plate, set it down somewhere else, and then you're ready to go immediately cutting that second cut. Yep. So if you got a whole chest of drawers, one and done. Um, show you my screen real quick. I have a fresh template. Um, Plate is the kind of thing you scan once, grid once, and never have to do it again. So fresh template, let's hop into that design tool, create a rectangle that is, I don't know, let's say four inches wide. What you all missed was Jake measuring his hand over here. Yeah, I just, I literally <laughs> just do that. And then roughly, I don't know, what do you say? Inch and a half tall? Inch and a half tall, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and we can see how it looks proportionately on the screen, too, which is nice. So 1.5, and then the trick here is, and I'm going to go ahead and use the calculator, 1.5 divided by 2. That's for that radius. And that gives me that radius. That looks like a nice size. That's that a nice, nice size and shape. I'm going to grab that center anchor point and drop it right at 0, 0. And I'm ready to go. Next cool. thing I need to do is switch it to a pocket. Now, why do we want to use a pocket? So, because of the nature of this new finger pull bit, it has an undercut to it. So, we can't use an inside or outside cut uh, because we'll pop through and ruin our nice rounded profile. So, we're only going to use pockets for this so that we can plunge and retract in the very center of our pocket and not mm -hmm. damage the outside edge. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So what pocketing mode does is it allows you to use Origin kind of like a standard plunge router where you can move around anywhere inside that gray hashed out pocket shape. But then once you get to the boundary of that pocket, that's when the auto correction kicks in. And so it won't let you go past the boundary of that shape. It's going to let us make that nice even pill shape inside the window of plate here. And I'm showing 17, 16 or 17? I think it's 16. 16 will do. 16 will do. I'm seeing 17. We can always sand out a little bit of... We should, uh, you know, next before the next show, we'll check the tech specs. You check that out. I'm okay. going to do this in two passes. Now, I'm working on MDF right now. Uh, it's pigmented MDF, so it's a nice, it's cool black color. With the 16-millimeter clearing cutter, still going to do that in two passes, just... Oh, I think you're right about 17. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right about 17. Two passes, final dip of 17. And you're clearing that out. Now, hold on a second. We're clearing that out with the 16 millimeter yep. router bit. Now, did you include that offset clearance there? I did not. So this is something <laughs> that we found out before the show. I always want to double check this stuff. Um, because this undercut has this cutaway portion here, and actually let's show that on the origin cam. When we are roughing, we don't want to rough past that smaller diameter. It's not the bigger diameter, it's the smaller diameter. And the difference in radius there is about six millimeters. So we're gonna use a roughing offset of six millimeters here so that when we're using the straight-sided router bit to rough with, we don't actually go past the, uh, the design boundaries. Let's go ahead and swap to the eight millimeter bit. Uh, we uh, ran out of room there? Yeah, that's okay. Okay, yeah, easy enough. So I'll grab you one of these. This one's a little toasty. Always clean your router bits, folks. Do as I say, not as I do. We do our best over here. All right, eight millimeter in. And don't forget to touch off on the material and not on the top of plate. So I like, I personally, if the bit's small enough, I like to go through the little keyholes here. Um, but you can do inside the window as well. There it is. There we go. All right. Ready to go. Is this going to be big enough, Jake? So we've got a 22 millimeter max diameter. And then we're adding 12 millimeters to that. So that's 34 millimeters. Uh-huh. Yeah? I don't know. Okay. 
We'll, f- we'll fudge it. We'll, fudge it. we'll, that's, that's we'll the... figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we might have to make this pill shape a little bit bigger just to accommodate uh, getting this inside the pill. Yeah. Totally. Okay. I'll just use a negative offset at that point and work my way out. Yeah. You so know these router right. bits? We just released them, so we're all learning together. That's yeah, the fun part, though. Okay. Let's try it out. So again, what Jake is doing here is just roughing out this pocket. And while this finger pull cutter is actually a plunge cutting router bit, which means it cuts all the way to the center of that finger pull, at the same time, it's a really beefy router bit too. And so it's a lot to push through that material, especially at at such a deep depth that it requires that 17 millimeters. So what we're doing here is going ahead and pocketing out a little clearance area in the middle of this pill so that we can go back in with that finger pull router bit and then get the actual profile of the pill with the finger pull router bit. Um, Jake's doing this, I think, in two depth passes, uh, which is a little bit on the aggressive side. We usually say to go about one bit diameter at a time. So 17 millimeters deep with an eight millimeter router bit is just a little bit past that. That's okay. Always say test to see what you're comfortable with when you're using router bits. Absolutely. All right. I think I'm never going to get tired of this swappable spindle thing. It's so handy. In with the finger pull bit, and that is a diameter of 16 millimeters. Bingo. Is it 16 millimeters? Are you sure it's not 22? Yeah. Huh. Okay. And we'll... (laughs) Now I gotta double check. (laughs) What's it say on the box? Shh, he's right. (laughs) There's too many numbers with these. When you get to multiple diameters, it just gets to be too many numbers. Now, as a reminder for everybody watching at home, you can use any router bit with Origin that uses a shank that is supported by our collet set. That's eighth inch, quarter inch, three millimeter, six millimeter, or eight millimeter, with two caveats uh, that the router bit must be less than one inch in diameter, and it must not have a bearing. Uh, Number two and a half is that it really ought to be center cutting, but there are ways that you can get around that. Really ought to be center cutting. Yeah, definitely should be. Okay. Going after it. All right, now what Jake's doing, and this is where the beauty of that pocket comes into play, is he's plunging in the center of the pocket so that he's not plunging through this really nice uh, undercut or overhang. Then he's going in and routing to the edge of that pocket, which is gonna let that auto correction kick in. Uh, And then when he's done with this cut, and it might take one or two passes, he's just going to go right to the middle. What do we think? Make it bigger? He just uh, gestured. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. So let's try it out. And you know, you could design this in all kinds of shapes. We did that rectangular cutout as kind of a test piece earlier today. Uh, We've seen people do diamond shapes, which I think are pretty cool. This pill shape is kind of a classic. But again, the beauty of Origin is that you could make kind of any shape that you want. So you could make a very organic shape. You could make a shape that runs down an entire row of drawers that kind of connects in an organic way. Um, You can copy this shape and modify it across a bunch of different pieces or across a bunch of door fronts. Uh, You could use it on the edge, you could use it on the face, the list goes on. There we go. Okay. So what settings did you end up using for that? I gave it an eighth of an inch offset, uh, and actually it's perfect. Yeah, let's do that overhead cam. Mm -hmm. And then for the next one, I'm actually going to back off just a hair on the depth. Yeah, a little shallower. Yep, just a little bit. And That'd buff out, but... Honestly, that's nicer than what it was going to be. Yeah, okay. That's what I had in mind. A little bigger. I think with this, you have to keep in mind the difference between the kind of undercut 
and the 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 minimum cut and the maximum cut. You wanna, if you wanna see a shape, you gotta design for that minimum cut. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of a lot to wrap your head around. We found the difference in radius was about six millimeters or so, or twelve millimeters on the diameter between that maximum cut and the minimum cut. So if you want to visualize something, you could add that twelve millimeters to the length and the width. Yeah. Now here's where that plate tip comes in. Plate is this universal template for origin, and just like you would use a plunge router template, you would move it across multiple work pieces. Um, <laughs> we've got to actually use plate. It doesn't work without plate yet, uh, but we are going to we're going to use plate. We're just going to lay it down on that work piece. And by virtue of the visual markers being on plate, Origin's going to kind of know where it is regardless of, of which exact workpiece we're working on because it's all relative to this template. And we have all these cool physical features built into the template to let you align it a bunch of different ways. And if you're interested in learning more about that, check out our sessions on plate. We've done a couple of them, and you will learn a ton. Okay. All right. Back to roughing. Should I try to rough it with this bit? To show the people what it's like? Sure. Okay. Are you yeah. going to do it all in one depth, or are no. you going to do it in two depths? I'm going to do it in two depths. So you got to still use that six millimeter offset. And that looks like six millimeters to me. That's compared to what? Compared to negative 0.125. Oh, okay. Uh, 0.125 is about three millimeters. Yeah, that's true. So what okay. if you did a positive 0.125? Does the router bit fit in there in it that case? It does not. Okay, I think you got to do it with this 8 millimeter bit. That's I okay. know we didn't want to do the two-step thing, but we love the spindle swap at the same time. Dude, the more chances you get to spindle swap, the better. It's just so satisfying. Um, if we were to make this pill shape a little bit bigger, you could probably do the whole thing all in one go. All right. That was with a... Six millimeter. Six millimeter offset. Got an eight millimeter router bit. Mm -hmm. Got to do the Z touch again, unfortunately. Yeah. That is the one thing that you got to remember to do every time. Cool. There we go. Cheap All set. So you could imagine getting in the flow with this with a set of five drawer fronts for something like a chest of drawers. You line them all up and you just move plate down the line one after the other. You mark them out, you bring plate to your mark, and you're ready to go. The reticle I think is my favorite plate alignment feature to use because typically when you use the reticle tool line you're also cutting out quite a bit of material inside the plate's window and I love removing material so the more the better. Usually when you're working with the fence you're doing something smaller like a hinge or a little flat pack connector but I like really ripping out stuff like these finger bowls Should make a little spindle rack that's nicer than that shelf. That would be a good show. <laughs> would anyone like to see a show about making a quick change spindle cleat? If so, let us know in the comments. Uh, yeah, just to just to make this completely clear, these spindles are for sale now. Um, for for the longest time, they haven't been, but this is kind of a new thing as of the last. I don't know how long, Jake. Two months. When yeah. did we have coffee on the show? That was about two months ago. About? Yeah. So uh, these spindles <laughs> have been for sale for about two months. Get yours at shapertools.com. Uh, makes doing these kind of mass production-y type things a lot easier. Or if, you know, you just have two router bits that you're going back and forth between very often. Like maybe you're engraving a lot and then you're doing a lot of quarter-inch routing with our basic, and router, uh, basic router bits that are included with Origin. Then get two spindles for those.
Don't forget to Z-touch. You know, that would be a cool feature if, uh, huh. I'm not even gonna say that one out loud. I'm gonna make a little mental note of this for later. I just had a great idea, everybody. Patent pending. Just uh, hang on to that one. Just wait a couple of years, you'll see it. Just you wait. There we go. There we go. So I see you. Uh, I see you fine tune the depth a little bit on that. That yep. must have been what that was last minute there. Sixteen point five. That was the perfect depth. That's the sweet spot, and it, oh, like, okay, that curve perfectly terminates. Uh, That's at the top nice. Base. Yeah. That's nice. Um, mm. Yeah. Always test first when in doubt. Sometimes we just. Uh, what's the term, Jake? Full send? Full, just full send. We just send, send it. it. We just send it on the show. Uh, but always do a test first. We've actually got a really cool example after the break of a little test we did mm -hmm. because we weren't sure. So we'll show you guys that. Yeah. But, I mean, this worked great. So you've got two drawer fronts. Let's say you're making two nightstands or something. You want them to match. Make a couple drawer faces. This is very cool. And, you know, the world is your oyster as far as shapes of these hinges or these uh, door pulls. Mm -hmm. I really want to do one that stretches the entire top, hmm. kind of like a full undercut top. I handle. thought you were going to say one that kind of cuts out of the corner like an L shape. Well, that would be cool. I too. think that would be cool too, like a uh, almost like a filing. You know those Manila folders that uh -huh. have the little tabs at the top. <laughs> I think that would be slick. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, I'm looking at our list. Is there anything else that we wanted to cover on this I'm, I'm on this like, poll thing? Well, you figure it out with us. Uh, 16.5 <laughs> millimeter depth. Yes. 22 millimeter, millimeter diameter. diameter. And yep. that's going to be your bit size. It, when I did some testing earlier, I set my bit diameter to the smaller mm -hmm. uh, radius. Which is about 12 or yeah. so. So that six millimeter radius difference that I'm saying uh, is actually a little bit extra, just in case. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really closer to five, but you know you always want to give yourself a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, right. Just in case. Okay. Well, I think that's it for that one. We're going to come back to the coving bit after our kind of classic now mid-show break. We got a couple things to announce, right? So first off, um, Ned, let's pull up that poll question. Our poll for the day is just where did you first see Shaper Origin? Um, we're trying to understand this a little bit better. Did you see it, you know, on Shaper Sessions? Or did you see it at a trade show? Or mm -hmm. did you see it at a friend's shop? Or did you see it on Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, we're just curious to hear, where did you first see Shaper Origin? And when entering that giveaway, you will also be entered to win um, one of these two new router bits, which we'll give away at the end of the show when we do that live Q&A. So that poll question should be up. Um, while that's up, let's talk a little bit about new stuff. Obviously, we've got two new router bits. We also have a screen protector that yeah. is new and in our store now. Um, we've been using this for a while on the show. You may or may not have noticed. Uh, what's really cool about it, uh, important for us, is it takes away some of that gloss that you get on Origin screen. Um, so if you get a lot of glare from fluorescent lights in your shop, we love it for that. Yeah. We obviously <coughs> love it for taking videos. Uh, what else is there to say about it? Uh, oh, man. I think especially for me, if I have a camera set up, you can no longer see my face in the reflection. <laughs> so you don't get, like, yeah, yeah. that view. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, you got any bats in the cave, Jake? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm <laughs> Who sure. Who knows? We don't know anymore. <laughs> well, there is video coverage of them. Yeah. Um, so those are the new things. We love those. Highly recommend you check out the accessories store. We also recommend you check out the accessories store because we have an accessories sale going on from now through July 23rd. Yeah. So that's uh, on everything so that's from... like just a couple days left. Yeah. Everything from bits, uh, collets. That and more. And more. Okay. Tape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Good time to stock up. It's 15% off. 
for the longest time, we didn't do sales that kind of affected the whole community, like for origin owners, but now we are with these accessory sales. So take advantage of it. Let us know that we should do more by participating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love that. Uh, what was the last thing? Trace Kickstarter. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. we've got this cool new product. We're going to do a couple more demos of it today. Check that out at Kickstarter, uh, or you could go to shapertools.com slash trace. I'm sure everyone has seen it by now, but just in case not, we're going to do another short demo after we do our shop tour. Yeah. And that is only on Kickstarter till tomorrow. Yes. Uh, and it ends 10 p.m. Pacific. So if you haven't gotten in on it yet, uh, if you have a friend that would be really interested in it, tell them about it. And the reason for that is if you back us on Kickstarter, you get a discount, you get 20% off, and you will be first in line. So um, yeah. we're fulfilling Kickstarter pre-orders before any other pre-orders. Um, so make sure you get that on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. So let's pull that poll question down. Uh, hopefully everybody's had enough time to fill that out. And let's pull up our shop tour. Now, our shop tour this week is from our friend Sean. We asked our buddy Sean, hey man, you've got a cool shop. Why don't you just show it off on a yeah. shop tour? He's a colleague of ours. You've probably seen him on sessions. You've probably seen him on sessions. Uh, we, uh, the shop tour that we did of our own shop here was a big hit, so we thought, why not share one more from the company? But also, we want more community shop tours, so please send them to us. Sessions at shapertools.com is the email address for that. And what we're looking for is short, two to four minutes. No editing, single cut, really low maintenance. Yeah. Narrate it, please, a little bit. We'd love to hear what you have to say about your shop. We can fill in or if you're not will. comfortable. Yeah. Uh, but we, <laughs> we love to hear what you have to say about your shop. And preferably also like horizontal or landscape view for that. So that's sessions at shapertools.com. And if you send us a shop tour, we're going to send you something fun, probably one of these new router bits, yeah. which is nice. Okay. Cool. Without further ado, let's pull up Sean's shop. Yeah. We'll start with the keeper of the shop, Ghost. This is my workshop. It's uh, about a 320 square foot workshop in my basement of my house. Uh, and I'll kind of give you the high level view of it and then we'll walk around and talk about some of my specifics. Um, so yeah, this is from here to there is 21 feet. Uh, this is 10 feet from here to here. And then it's about 20 feet from here to here. So 315 square feet uh, and about 29 square meters for people on the other side of the pond. So let's start over here. So they have the helical head six inch joiner from Grizzly, which is quite nice. I'm a big fan, would like a bigger one, but what are you gonna do? All my electronics, soldering, some random tools, uh, the Capex miter saw, which, you know, you either love it or hate it. I love the handle. It's hooked up to a small uh, Festool dust collector. Uh, I have a Craftsman old uh, tool chest that I picked up. Uh, and check out how organized all my drawers are. They're great. Time to get some trace action up in here. But yeah, I keep all my hand tools and uh, different types of things in here. Really cleaned up my workshop when I got that. Um, let's talk about my workbench and this over here. This is my main tool wall where I keep a lot of my hand tools that I like. I do like to do kind of a mix of hand tools and digital. Uh, I find that, you know, for doing stuff like these brushes and stuff, it's just the perfect mix for me. Uh, here's a little cabinet I made with all my planes that actually need to be better organized. So we're going to shut that. Um, I made a little shelf for all my sustainers, mini ones, which is kind of nice to have, you know, the plate stuff right here and ready when I need it. And then I can put it back here when I'm done. Um, just some hand tools that I use all the time. Chorus plate. Uh, this one's gotten some abuse, but it still works and, uh, you know, it has uh, lots of love in it. Uh, just some of my drills. I did actually manage to pick up all 300 fine woodworking magazines. So I keep some of these out here when I want to sift through them. I'm just drying some lumber that I'm working on. Of course, my favorite tool in the shop, 
Uh, this workstation also has some love, so I thought I'd share this because, you know, I, some, I know some people are really precious about their thing. Well, you know, it still works. It works great. Uh, and I cut a lot of brass and all sorts of materials. Um, but yeah, this is, I keep workstation set up all the time here. Uh, it's just great to have it set up and I origins on top. Uh, and then one of my favorite things, which I just got is H and T Gordon pattern makers vice. This vice is pretty cool. It's kind of hard to do it one handed, but basically if I loosen this, I can, I can get this into this, any kind of position this way and then this lever over here will allow this to kind of swivel 360 so whatever you're trying to do with hand tools you can get the material right into where you need it i got a muse uh, laser which is quite nice i love it a lot uh, i have a dust collector hooked up to it that just sucks it out of the house uh, california air tools a great thing uh, the rigid workhorse for sanding i got some wheels for the sustainers that are quite nice to keep them uh there just got some lumber storage and stuff in the back here along with uh a bunch of my material storage i have a small bandsaw here i have this planer which is a crowd favorite everyone loves it they're hooked up to the same dust collector so i can just kind of quickly open or close one and then I got, this is a cool build that I did a couple years ago with some really beefy mortise and tenons on uh, Origin. Then I have a little cabinet here where I keep a lot of my sander, sanding paper, little tools, clamps. The That's my actual clamping station normally where I keep my clamps. Just kidding. Uh, I need a better spot for that. And then just a bunch of stuff there. I have... Uh, the MFT right behind a table saw is an outfeed table and kind of general work area. And that's pretty much it. So hope that gives you a little bit of view into what my shop is set up like. I, I like to have a lot of space. So yeah, that's going to be it. Thanks everyone and hope you enjoyed it. We're good. Did everyone hear that? That was fun. <laughs> We're around the wave. Uh, okay, Jake, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> Wait, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, uh, man. Thanks for sending that in, Sean. Uh, yeah, that always... reminds me, I got to get my clamps back from Sean. Yeah. I loaned him all my clamps when I moved to San Francisco. Like, half of those are mine. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see the way he treats those clamps. Uh, very cool. Always good to see yeah. ghosts, too. I love seeing a shop and tools that are beat up yeah you know people are like sean said people are kind of precious about their workstation and stuff it works you yeah. can you can use it like use that tool that bandsaw too we uh we picked up up in mendocino at the krenov school it was mm -hmm. someone was selling it yeah uh, fun pretty cool fun times cool find uh thanks sean <clears throat> and for everyone watching at home uh this is also not just an offer for live viewers this is for everyone who's watching on demand also please send us that shop tour to sessions at shapertools.com yeah okay last time i'll say it. uh let's move on to the can you trace it can you trace it all right we got two really cool emails this week we got more but these are the coolest ones so i'm gonna read the first one all right this one's from charles uh, two offerings, and we just picked one from each of these folks. Two offerings. The Kaizen would be an inlay, and I think from what I have seen, it would be easily done. The second, a Kumiko pattern would be great as exploded parts, and I think it is more challenging. Interested in your thoughts and really looking forward to the addition to the Shaper ecosystem. From Chuck. Okay, the Kumiko pattern needed a little bit of work, hmm. but we are going to trace this, which he says is uh, Kaizen symbols. So, all right, let's pull this up. All right. We've got our piece of paper. We've got the trace frame. Yeah, let's do that overhead. Cool. And hold on just a second here, Ned. Let me make sure that the app is pulled up. All right, you got that? You can see the, uh, see the phone cam here? Okay, so when we, when we pop over here, let's actually refresh this. It's been thinking for a while. There we go. Let it use that camera. Okay, when we pop over here, you see it turns to black and white. That means it's ready to capture. 
We're going to hit that button, and wham, bam, there you go. That's a vector. So that is definitely traceable. That's Can you awesome. trace it? And this was just a JPEG from the internet. Um, I printed it out. I scaled it up a little bit so that it was easier to see. You could actually see in person there is a little bit of fuzz in here. A little uh, bit of pixelation. Jake kind of pointed it out before the show, but it traced just fine. So that was really cool. All right, second email. Subject, a complicated trace. Okay, so this one's fun. This is from Glenn. Howdy, attached to two JPEG files. One is the test subject. A second is a close-up view of some details just for context and your understanding. You could trace the second one and glue them together to get the same piece. The pictures are from a book of stickly inlays from the original craftsman period. This inlay would be done in three different materials and would be used on a chair or drawer. Can you trace it? Regards, Glenn. Okay, so let's take a look at this original image on the overhead cam. This might be kind of hard to see, but what we've got is a couple of different segments and they are kind of color coded differently compared to what style of wood they're supposed to be. This is a, co a complex inlay and it's got light, dark, and medium wood uh, based on some cross hatching here. And this cross hatching is not traceable. That's going to mm -hmm. be really complicated. Um, it's going to kind of confuse the black and white sensors you want. The more contrast, the better. Not to mention the grayscale of the photo. We want something real right. stark. Got a lot of shadows in there. So, but what I did, you can see if, maybe you can see this better, if I put this under this tracing paper, what I did here was I first literally, again, <laughs> traced. Trace so you can trace. I traced this inlay with this tracing paper. Now we can pull this out, and we've got that really nice black and white image. So I'm going to pull up the app again. We can switch back over to the phone here. I'm just going to go start a new capture. Okay, I always want to let it use the camera. Okay, and now if I, there we go, zoom out just enough for it to say ready to capture. I'm going to hit that capture button. And now here, see this is the outline. Uh, just like we showed on the last session, if you want to do that inlay, we're going to switch this to a center line. And all of these parts are now separable to make an actual inlay. Um, the quality of this is going to be dependent on the quality of your tracing. Mm -hmm. But seeing as how this was kind of originally from a stickly book, I think my tracing is pretty good. And all that stuff was drawn by hand anyway. Yeah. Um, if you want to get super pro about it, you can bust out your French curves. You can bust out your compass. Like I could use a compass to, to make that square or not, not a square, the circle mm -hmm. at the top. Um, but it went really well. I was really pleased with how this went. And this is a super cool inlay. This would be phenomenally difficult to design digitally. But oh, if you yeah. have a book of Craftsman inlays, you're ready to rock. And a book of trace paper. This stem between the two, the stem, you can see it on the screen here. Also, we could pull the screen back up. Um, this stem, if I... Uh, if I zoom in, this stem is what he was talking about being able to to glue together multiple pieces. So you might put a uh, you might put a piece of like long eighth inch inlay connecting those for a longer a longer piece. So cool. Yeah, pretty slick. I love okay, it. that's it for can you trace it? I think that was a success. I think so too. Uh, let's pull up our second router bit demo. All right. We got a cutting board. We're gonna do a juice groove. Nice. Juice groove? Juice, juice groove. groove. Juice groove. Juice groove. Ju. Ju. <laughs> Ju groove. That's me when I'm dancing. <laughs> All so right. So we... <laughs> let's, let's switch to the overhead cam here. I'm gonna distract from that. Uh, let's switch to the overhead cam here. This is where we're gonna show this, you know, try before you commit. Yes. approach. So this is something we did before the show here. We have five different depths of this coving bit uh, from 0 0.025 inches down to 0 0.125 inches. Mm -hmm. And we want a nice, tasteful, modest juice groove. We're not trying to soak up the Pacific Ocean here. Uh, so I think we're going to go for a final depth of 0 0.04 inches. All right. Just always love pointing this out. I put down origin and immediately recognizes this new workspace, uh, the workspace that we scanned before the show. Existing workspace, yeah. Existing workspace. And I just hit that green button and we're... And if you zoom out, you can see that cutting board that I kind of cut in right advance. Um, but coming back to these little trials here, in general, 
coving bits are difficult because they like to burn. Mm -hmm. um, you got to move really quickly with them um, and really steadily. But that's why we did a couple of tests. And we are going to do a roughing and finishing pass. But instead of using offsets, we're going to be adjusting the depth ever so slightly mm -hmm. so that our finish pass is like, super light like the thickness of a piece of paper we're yeah. going to do 0 0.035 inches on the first pass and then we're going to do 0 0.04 inches on the second pass so that's an additional five thousandths of an inch and i bumped up the auto speed a little bit on this to 15 inches per minute just to keep it moving okay. um, we might want to bump it up even more because it's such a light cut all right we're gonna set bit diameter to 11 millimeters which mm -hmm. this is an online cut so it doesn't really matter it doesn't really matter for an online cut and when you get on that line before you zoom in you can see kind of the shape that we're going for this is the thing that would make it exceptionally hard to do on any other tool mm -hmm. which is that not only are we making this kind of organic shape we're also deviating from the edge so that we can go around that circular pull yeah or that handle cool all right so we're going to do point zero three five zero three five to start with a zero inch offset Wants me to go that direction. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you some space. You have your auto speed set to 15. Yeah. You could even turn it up a little bit, too, if you're comfortable. But 15 was, 15 was good. It was moving. Okay. Let's do 17. Dare to be dangerous. Uh, and spindle speed. What were you using? I don't remember. Whatever it was. I think I looked, and it was actually surprisingly low. It was at, like, 3. I'm going to keep it at three, I think, because yeah. we'll keep that friction down. Yeah, good plan. Okay, here we go. So Jake's just going to do two passes with this online cut, one at that first depth and then another at the final depth. And here you'll see, if you're new to Origin, you'll see Origin do that kind of, um, the more standard autocorrect that you would expect from it where it keeps Jake literally on the line the entire time as he's moving around. If Jake's a little bit to the left of the line, the spindle's going to compensate for him in the other direction. If he's a little bit to the right of the line, the spindle's going to automatically compensate for him in the other direction. And that's going to keep him right on the line as he goes all the way around this profile. Um, I think he's using auto, so that auto speed is going to keep that router bit moving, which is nice, especially for this coving bit. Using auto lock will will get that router bit moving the instant it's cutting, uh, as opposed to plunging and then moving the router bit yourself. Even that half second of pause right there, if you're using a bit that's prone to burning, can increase the friction enough to leave a little bit of a mark. But using auto lock gets that router bit moving right away, which I think is really nice for bits like this that are a little bit more likely to burn. It's just kind of a standard feature of coving bits. Now Jake's just taking off that last five thousandths of an inch, which is about the thickness of a piece of copy paper. A piece of copy paper is pretty regularly four thousandths, three and a half thousandths, but gives you kind of a reference there. For anyone who's joined us later in the show, these are our two new router bits in the accessories store. We've got this finger pole router bit, which we did a demo of in the first half of the show. If you missed that, check out this session on demand later at sessions.shapertools.com. We usually get those up within a week for sure, usually after a couple of days. So that'll be up for you to watch anytime. And then also this coving bit, along with, last but not least, a kind of matte textured screen protector, which protects your screen. I don't think the screen really needs much protecting. The thing that it does really well is it is kind of an anti-glare, which is great for us when we're filming. Um, great if you have really bright fluorescent lights in your shop that have annoyed you with the reflection. Uh, this anti-reflective screen protector is really nice. Ned says it's reflecting the light above Jake though, so joke's on me. That's our studio setup for you. Imagine how bad it would be if you didn't have the screen protector though. That is really nice. There you go. That is nice. Yeah, let's do that overhead cam. 
you can kind of see that. Do we want to show that on the bench cam? Maybe we pop that out. Yeah, I want to, there we go. That looks a little better. I just want to show the depth of that. I like that texture. I'll take that. There we go. Cool. Real tasteful. Not a ton, you know, you, and of course you can go deeper. Um, this is more of an aesthetic decision. And as you go deeper, you're going to get a wider groove too with this particular bit up to 11 millimeters. Mm -hmm. um, which if you're doing a big old butcher block and you plan on like carving up an entire roast, mm -hmm. you're going to need a deeper juice groove. Yeah. This one's for vegetables. Vegetable juice. <laughs> this one's for uh, just a little bit of apple juice. You know, you slice an apple. It's not that much. <laughs> That's Perfect. very cool. Yeah. Tasteful. It does look kind of like a steak. What do you think? It's kind of <laughs> it like a steak to anybody else? Okay, that's our show. We got two new router bits. We had demos of each. Um, we had some Can You Trace It. We had a cool shop tour from our buddy Sean. That's a wrap. So we're going to go into that live Q&A. If you're watching this on demand, make sure you join us live next time. See you all next time. Thank you, everyone. Take care.